today we're going to make a skipping video and I'm going to kind of tell y'all the number one mistake that I feel like people make whenever they're trying to skip and I hate to phrase a video that way because I don't like talking about mistakes I don't like phrasing anything in a negative light but skipping there is one mistake that I see a lot of people make that I feel like makes it a little more difficult for them to skip so if y'all did not watch my last video you know you're not the one that commented but i appreciate you watching this one but last week or a couple days ago actually posted a video and it got a ton of comments about make a skipping video because i mentioned in there that if y'all want me to i would make another skipping video so today we're out here on a small little local lake i have my seven foot three this is i'm gonna break y'all down the gear that i use before we get started this is a seven foot three heavy point blank rod it's got fuji guides on it and this is a eight to one gear ratio reel this is 20 pound Sunline. This is actually a FC leader line. This line has actually less stretch than the shooter does, but it's a little bit harder to cast, a little bit less manageable. Like the sniper is the easiest line to manage. So if you really want to get good at skipping and have a really good free flow and smooth line, the sniper is going to be a little better casting line. The shooter is going to be a little bit stronger and tougher and kind of less stretch, and but it's a little bit harder to cast, but it's kind of a better line, more sensitive. This line right here is even less stretch than shooter, even more sensitive than shooter, and a little bit more abrasion resistance too also is the way it seems to me so far. But that's the line I'm using, the rod I'm using, the reel I'm using, 8 to 1 gear ratio. And this is a half ounce ace, untamed tackle ace jig with a missile mini d-chunk it's a pretty good trailer for skipping it's got a really flat bottom it's got legs that don't create a ton of drag but still have a lot of action so whenever you do skip under there it will still get you a lot of bites but the biggest thing about this trailer is it does have a pretty wide bottom that's pretty flat so it makes it skip really really well so about to take this out there slide it under a few docks on this small little local lake and kind of walk y'all through exactly how I skip. I'm not a very good teacher because I kind of do things just by feel. Like I just kind of turn it loose and let it slide under there. I've just done it a lot. So I'm going to try to break it down and explain it the best I can and kind of tell y'all the mistake that I see a lot of people making. So let's put this aluminum, Alumacraft bandit in the water. See if we can't catch a bass or two. So a jig is actually not one of the easiest baits to skip. It is definitely probably the most common bait that you hear about people skipping around docks and overhangs and stuff like that. But a worm is a lot easier bait to skip or like a big bodied, like a topwater frog that you reel or something like that. Those baits are extremely easy to skip. A jig is a little bit harder to skip. A jig is really important to whenever you are actually throwing this bait to make sure that it hits bottom first. So you really need the jig to hit with this part hitting on top of the water for it to skip correctly. Sometimes you throw it out there and it's gonna hit upside down and stuff like that. So a jig, it's really important to manage it properly from the beginning of the cast to whenever you're rolling it around and everything it needs to be all kind of in the same motion every single time to make sure that bait hits properly on the water and that's another thing i got a couple comments about people saying that skipping a spro popping frog is a little bit more difficult and that is true because it has that popping mouth that will catch water every once in a while so it's really important that whenever you're kind of lining everything up and starting that roll cast that way you make sure that frog is going to hit with the butt first or the bottom first and the same thing with this jig or if you're skipping a buzz bait or anything like that that's a little bit more difficult to skip it's really important that that plastic the flattest part of that plastic hits very very first so if you want to kind of get prepared and kind of practice if you're new to skipping or you're just kind of have a refresher course just kind of get in the middle of a pocket and then just practice casting and getting your bait lower and lower and lower to the water so i read somewhere Actually, whenever we was designing this jig, we kind of did a deep dive on trying to make it one of the best skipping jigs and wood jigs and all that. So we found that a 17 degree angle through some of our research online was kind of the best trajectory to get that bait to skip the most efficiently across the top of the water. So uh, you kind of want to, a lot of guys that fish aren't exactly the best with angles and numbers and stuff like that. And I understand that, but a 17 degree cast is going to be your most efficient at making that bait hit the top of the water and skip across the top of the water from the research that I found. And also the owner of own team did a lot of research also. And he found kind of the same thing, kind of put me onto it. Then I did my own research. So you want to kind of practice getting that bait a little bit closer to the water. Just make a few casts, try to get it as low to the water as you possibly can. And you need to have your reel pretty dang loose. A lot of people want to have a little bit tighter reel. And that's the mistake I see them make is they really try to force that bait in there and throw it too hard and whenever you throw a bait really hard with a reel that's a little bit too tight that's going to cause that bait to actually rise up and if you don't have a perfect cast trajectory it's going to actually make that bait tail off to the left or tail off to the right especially if you're right-handed it's really going to want to tail off to the left and you'll see it whenever you cast and a lot of y'all probably experienced that if your reel is a little bit too tight that jig's going to kind of tail off 
make you hit the float on the dock or it's going to rise up make you hit underneath the top of the dock or something like that so you really just want to practice getting your bait as low to the water as you possibly can a couple casts in a row and then kind of get it a little bit lower don't hit yourself in the head with it or nothing like that until you can get it to where it really glides on the top of the water so practice that out in the middle but the biggest thing is you want to have a repetitive kind of a setup a follow through a trajectory and everything at least whenever you're first learning so after you get good at it yeah you'll be able to skip at this angle and you'll be able to skip at that angle and out in front of the boat and everything but at first you really want to make sure that every time you come up to a dock so for me the main thing i'm going to want to be doing is stay on this side of the boat and make sure i'm cast into like there's a bush right there so i want to make sure that every time i come up to a dock i'm kind of in the same kind of trajectory where i can have the same wind up the same speed and don't try to overwork it make sure you have a you know good guides on your rod that comes off extremely smooth you want to have a reel that's pretty loose and you want to have line that's pretty manageable like i said about the sunline sniper a little bit more manageable line so whenever you come up to something you can just have like the same kind of a trajectory on your cast and skip it out there so you can see how that one did if i am going down the bank skipping docks that are on this side of the boat i can come up to every single dock and just skip it under there like that and skip it underneath every single dock so that's kind of how you'd want to start and then after you get a little bit better you know a little bit more comfortable doing it you can turn to the other side of the boat and you can skip back this way a time or two then after you get exceptionally good at skipping you could factor in backhanding it to get it underneath some places or casting left-handed or even kind of pitching it out there if you're in close quarters you can kind of pitch it underneath the dock and skip it that way also so that's kind of the setup you want to have loosen your reel up because you don't want to be trying to throw it too hard you don't want to be trying to force it you literally just want to roll your wrist throw it kind of lightly see that one skipped out there if the dock was right there it would have skipped under there 12 or 15 feet so that's kind of what you want to try to do whenever you're skipping have very consistency so that whenever you're learning you can get a little bit better for me it's a little bit harder to actually skip out in the middle like that there's these big roller waves now i hit one of them but whenever you're learning it's going to be a little bit harder to change the trajectory so you just want to be consistent and then we're going to go slide under a dock or two here and there and try to give you a little bit of live action look at it and then i'll break down the cast of how to get under a dock whenever we get to an actual dock so but literally all you want to do is simply roll your wrist keep the line coming off as smoothly as you possibly can and that's what you want to do okay so one thing that i see a lot of people try to do to combat backlash and whenever you're skipping is they won't fill the spool all the way up and that might be a really good approach for you to do whenever you're learning to skip especially with how much some of this high quality fluorocarbon line costs i understand if you only want to fill the spool halfway or anything like that what you're doing is though you have the same gear ratio on the reel but if you have a circle this big it's just like a car tire if you have a circle this big and it's spinning eight times you're going to take up more line than if you've got a circle this big that's spinning eight times just not going to take up as much line so i like to have mine a little bit actually i like to have it really full i feel like it comes off the spool even a little bit more smoothly whenever it's really full all the way up to the top but you have to have your reel set correctly to get it to do that so i'm gonna pop open the side plate show y'all i actually don't even know what i have on this one and this is one thing that i'll tell y'all is every single reel is completely different i'm talking about even the exact same one so on this reel actually i have every single brake turned on so that means i have this reel about as tight as you could have it so this reel i actually have another two more reels exactly like this and if they're set to throw exactly the same i'll usually have two brakes down which means the brakes are off and then two on which means the brakes are on or out which means the brakes are on so right now i have all four of these brakes on which means i have the reel relatively tight as far as how the reel can perform but it doesn't feel like that whenever i'm casting it let me put this I forgot to put this side plate back on. I haven't done this in a while. So I'm gonna look like a rookie trying to put it back on. But there's actually, I think I got it upside down. There's actually also a little dial on the outside of it and I've got it set to just a hair over four. One thing that people always wanna ask me is exactly how the reel is set. How loose is it? How tight is it? I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, every single reel is completely different. Every brand, every, you know, like if you go up a price point or anything like that to a different uh, model and the brand or anything like that but even amongst the exact same reel i've got three of these reels 
all three of them are set completely differently because of exactly how they all cast so no two reels cast exactly the same so it's a lot more of a feel thing so i want y'all to pay attention to on this cast how the line actually comes off the spool the line comes off the spool with almost no resistance comes off extremely straight and it doesn't blow up at all inside the reel so that's going to give you a lot more consistent cast and it's going to give you the most efficient cast for throwing far and for skipping and all that type of stuff so pay attention to exactly how the, the line peels off of the spool and how straight it comes off that's the biggest key to how you want to have your reel set but every single reel is going to need to be set just a hair differently so remember that and try to get your reel set exactly like that got me one he got a little bit left two pounder ate that sucker right up beside that dock that's why i like that jig see how it hooked him right there in the side of the cheek that's where it's almost always going to be at right there that's where like i'd say seven out of ten of them are like right there pretty little little dock fish They got a little chicken wire right there. They must not want you under there. Still just gotta pick you, pick you one of them holes to go through. Sling it on in there. So whenever you're trying to skip these docks, like I said earlier, Boat positioning is extremely important. I know I didn't phrase it like that earlier. I said it was always good to cast going the same way, but boat position is what makes that possible. So you want to make sure that you have the boat angled in a way where you're not subconsciously thinking about you're scared of hitting the console or you're not casting worried about hitting the trolling motor. You want to really make sure that you've got a wide open space for your rod to go, you know, like right there and then cast kind of at a 45 degree angle kind of towards that or you know like kind of towards that next dock over there is about optimal now like i said after you get a little bit better at it you can actually like turn and skip at a bunch of different angles but whenever you're learning especially boat positioning is the number one thing that i can see that'll make a lot of people have a better time skipping because whenever you get in a weird spot or you go too far past the dock the best thing to do if you get kind of out of position it just kind of pitch the jig up around to anything that you can see and not try to worry too much about skipping under it until you get a good angle on the next dock so like i'm coming up right now to this float right here we're at about the perfect angle right now to really skip it under there obviously i went hit the float on the other side of it but that's what you want to do is consistently have your boat going at the right speed for you turn the trolling motor down go a little bit slower so that you can manage it a little bit better whenever you're first learning and then keep it always at the same angle so now i'm going to kind of rotate the boat around the dock and kind of head that way so i've got the same angle to be able to skip under there from that side i didn't even skip it that time just cast under there that's a little bit easier right now because on this small little local lake the water is a little bit lower than normal so we're just kind of makes it a little bit easier make you look like you know what you're doing a little bit better when the water dropped a little bit so that's what we're doing one thing that i want to talk about as far as the actual fundamentals of casting and kind of where to keep your arm and everything like that kind of keep your elbow pretty tight don't do a lot of you know moving your arm you really kind of want to keep everything streamlined and only kind of rotate your wrist and then i put my hand on the bottom on the butt of the rod so that i can actually just generate some force with just kind of flipping my wrist and slide it over there like that so that's what you want to do kind of take all the big winding up and all that out of it and then just kind of use what you have available as far as the butt of the rod the reel being relatively loose and then kind of just don't force it just kind of roll it in there and whenever you've got everything set up pretty good it'll actually do a little bit better than you would actually even expect so that's kind of the approach to it let's go implement some of that try to catch this big large mouth under some of these docks so like you can see obviously there's nothing to skip under going to that point but if i was trying to skip up to that point this is the perfect angle for just kind of you know skipping to right there my rod's just completely out in the open nothing to hit at all i can't stress that enough boat positioning is number one whenever you're trying to skip boat docks and then having your reel set is probably actually number two behind boat positioning so make sure you keep your boat in the right spot go at the right pace for you 
and just kind of pick them apart and you can go slow i go very fast you don't have to go fast you can go a lot slower until you get the confidence built up you can go a little bit faster and then kind of push yourself and push it so just remember those couple things if you're trying to get better at skipping i just barely got him hooked though He was way back under that dock. Look at that one. Look at that one. That's a good one. There we go. Right through the nose. Pretty little jig bass. I hope y'all enjoyed that skipping tutorial, kind of the breakdown. I just kind of wanted to hit some of the high points, let y'all know. Most of it is all based off of feel. It's just kind of every, for every body, every reel, every rod. It's going to be a little bit different to set everything. And kind of the way you want to skip is going to be a little bit different depending on exactly how high you are off the water, how tall you are. Everything kind of changes it a little bit but if you're interested in learning how to skip hope that video helped a little bit and if you already know how to skip let me know if you do something a little different than i do maybe i can improve on a little bit myself so let me know how you do it also hope you all enjoyed that that was overwhelmingly recommended by most of the you know like commenters on my last video so hope you all enjoyed that leave a like for me going up there and getting that skipping video done appreciate y'all watching and we'll see y'all in the next one